Hello and welcome to our Bible class for April 10th, uh, 2022, uh, Palm Sunday. And we're looking today as we get into Holy Week at uh, Judas as our person from the life of Jesus. And so betrayed by Judas, one of his 12 disciples, betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver, betrayed by Judas with a kiss. Imagine that, a kiss. Betrayed by Judas in a garden east of Jerusalem called Gethsemane. Betrayed. Jesus was betrayed for us. After betraying Jesus, Judas plunges into the depths of despair. He does not return to Jesus to seek forgiveness. But this Thursday, the night Jesus is betrayed, reminds us of the forgiveness, life, and salvation that Jesus provides for us in the Lord's Supper. May we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus as we journey ever closer to the cross. All right, so who is exactly this Judas Iscariot, kind of the most infamous traitor of all time? Well, that's a really good question, because we really, aside from knowing he's a traitor, we don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, there's even debate about, um, so Judas was, was a pretty popular name, uh, but there's some debate over what Iscariot means. Uh, one one uh, guess, one hypothesis is that it's, it sounds a lot like the Sicarii we talked about with uh, Barabbas last week, those uh, the splinter groups of zealot named after their little daggers they used for the assassination of Romans, and so that would put Judas in a very strongly revolutionary camp. Um, he's named at the end of the list of disciples alongside the Simon the Zealot, so that lends a little bit to their... Um, Historians are, do they debate whether the Sicarii were organized enough to have known that, have that label applied to them at the time of Jesus or not. Uh, they were more, got more active as you got closer to the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, the other main hypothesis, main guess, and this probably makes as much sense too, is that it's really Iscariot means of Kerioth. Um, there's a couple guesses at where the village is, but they're all in the south of Judah. Now then, this this is unique here. So 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 here's Jerusalem, and here's Kerioth, uh, or at least one of the guesses for it. Um, and this is the the Dead Sea ish. Uh, there's the Sea of Galilee. Now, so what's different then? Now, most, if not all, of the other disciples seem to be Galileans. Um, you know, Jesus gets gets the other disciples while they're fishing on the Sea of Galilee, uh, or they're in Capernaum, or in some of the towns around there, uh, or following uh, John the Baptist, uh, or there's some we don't necessarily hear their call, but they all seem to be Galileans except for Judas. Um, and so that places him um, then um, as kind of the outsider of the group. Um, you know, he'd be the one who's not from the same place as everyone else, including, you know, Jesus. Because, of course, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he's raised in Nazareth. Um, and so that's, that's the other main hypothesis for what Iscariot means. Uh, we also know he's the treasurer, which seems to be the only formal position of the, in the group of disciples. I mean, we talk about, you know, Peter being kind of the spokesman, and we get the it, Peter, James, and John is the, you know, kind of leadership group that goes with Jesus and does things. But uh, none of the other ones get assigned anything. They're not following Robert's rules of order. They're not... Um, you know, they don't have a secretary or a vice president or anything like that, but they have a treasurer. They have someone who's keeping track of the money bag, and it's Judas. Um, and so that comes up a couple times in these in these passages we look at, uh, and sometimes even then comes up as part of the reason for why Judas betrays Jesus. Um, and so, in fact, then when we're introduced to Judas in all four Gospels in the list of the disciples, um, he's just introduced as Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him, or who who would betray him, or had betrayed him, um, d depending on on the on the writer. But that that's his defining characteristic is um, is tra is being a traitor, is betraying Jesus. But the the funny thing is that you know he had to he betrays Jesus, but yet he'd been he'd been following Jesus and had plenty of opportunities if he'd wanted to just not follow Jesus anymore. Uh, in John 6, at the end of John 6, and this is the bread of life chapter. So uh, Jesus starts talking about, after feeding the 5,000, talks about how they need to eat his flesh because uh, he's the bread of life, um, alluding both to 
uh, how the way God provided manna in the wilderness for the Israelites. Um, and we Christians you sometimes see that too as a, he's looking ahead to communion on what that'll do. Um, but lots of disciples leave. But after this, many of his disciples turn back and no longer walk with him. But Jesus starts talking, you need to eat my flesh. Lots of people get think this is weird and, and leave. Uh, so Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away as well? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know you, that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, did I not choose you, the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. So, in other words, Judas had a chance to do it, but he doesn't. But Jesus knows he's going to betray him, even if no one else does yet. And maybe even if Judas himself doesn't know, know yet, there's debate about that too. Um, again, and this, again, son of Simon Iscariot, that lends a little, little credence, a little more believability to the fact that it's Iscariot means of Kerioth, so it's from of the town that he's from. Um, but the, the big thing we got, get of Judas then, his, um, his challenge is what we, um, we re- well, we read this one when we talked about Mary, of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Um, but Judas, Judas has a key point in this episode too. So six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And so this is right before Palm Sunday. And they gave a dinner for Jesus there. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment from the pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, he who was about to betray him, in case you forgot that this is the guy who's going to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have have with me, but you do not always have me. And when the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. And so again, so uh, Mary washes uh, and anoints Jesus, um, but with this expensive perfume that I uh, sold for 300 denarii. Uh, denarii is uh, worth a day's wages, so we're talking about a year's, 300 denarii is close to a year's worth. Um, so pretty expensive stuff, but, and so uh, Jesus sees this as a, of course we saw this as a generous action, um, whereas Judas is uh, greedy and um, John at least thinks that the reason Judas objects is that he wants control of the money because then he can skim some off the top. Um, and so and so that's at least part of Judas's motivation that you're giving him him this this greedy aspect um, that he's not in line with all the humility stuff that the other disciples are that Jesus has been teaching anything like that. Um, so, but as we'll see, there seem to be some, there, there's other possible motivations too. All right. So then now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put Jesus to death because they fear the people. Again, this is what the, the pre, they're trying to getting ready to kill Jesus. And then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray Jesus to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray Jesus to them in the absence of a crowd. And so we already then here in Luke 22 have <coughs> have Judas has finally hit the point uh, just before Holy Week that he's going to get the chief, betray Jesus to the to the chief priests, and he's doing so for 30 pieces of silver. Um, so again, that kind of goes along with that greed aspect um, that we saw in this other account. All right, and then, uh, but then we also hear too, uh, John 13, uh, beginning of the Last Supper, 
uh, during the supper when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. So um, we also seem to get that uh, Judas is <coughs> is betraying Jesus, but not necessarily <coughs> not necessarily because of himself, but because Satan's entered him. Now, of course, you know, Satan had to have the opportunity to enter into him, so uh, there's he's got got some guilt there. Um, but it seems like, you know, even if Judas had wanted to back out, Satan's possessing him now at this point, and so won't be able to. All right, and, so, and then after saying these things, uh, this is at washing the disciples' feet and stuff, then after saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom Jesus spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, so John, uh, was reclining at table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple leaned back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, <coughs> he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after it taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Satan had been <coughs> around, but uh, but seems to be in control now. And Jesus says to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why Jesus says this to Judas. Some thought that <coughs> because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that we should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he went out immediately, and it was night. Um, and again, uh, especially in, in John's Gospels, it happens in some of the other ones too. Um, the, but that some of the times when we get those, uh, get these descriptions of light, uh, of day and night kind of things, that's representing how they are um, spiritually as well. And so Judas goes out in at night because he's now in spiritual darkness. Um, he's leave, leaving the light, leaving Jesus. All right, so um, again, we won't look at the accounts across all all the gospels, but I uh, found this was included in the uh, some of the stuff with the um, with the Lenten series, so it gives us a good basic overview. Um, so you can stop and read these Bible passages by yourself and see how they work together. Uh, but so Judas is present at the Last Supper, and the sequence of his actions are as follows: He goes to betray the chief priest to to. He goes to the chief priest to betray Jesus for money. Again, that's recorded in, in those three Gospels. And so he's paid 30 pieces of silver. And he's with the disciples at the initial part of the Passover supper. You know, so he's, he's still with them at that point. Now, the devil puts it in Judas's heart to betray Jesus. Jesus tells the disciples that they are not all clean when he's washing their feet in a reference to Judas. Some of them, they sit back down and, at, and eat and Jesus tells the disciples that one would betray him. This is the passage we just saw. They include Judas asking, it is, I, is it I? <coughs> but Jesus says that the one who dips the morsel with him will betray him. And Jesus tells Judas that he is the one and gives him a morsel. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper with the disciples. And then Judas immediately leaves and goes to the chief priests. And so he's been with them. Um, but he leaves before um, he leaves while the supper is still going on, so he can get ready. But he also then knows that Jesus is going to Gethsemane because it talks about it was a place that Jesus went all the time. Um, and so then they he go, he goes, and again the big betrayal comes with the kiss, um, and also comes then just that. Um, so a knowing where knowing where Jesus would be without crowds of people around him so he can kind of have the have a quiet arrest and be also that um, that they can identify Jesus at night um, that uh, the the Roman guards aren't going to know what Jesus looks like even the chief priest guards might not know exactly what Jesus looks like and so they need Judas to positively identify him so they know they get the right guy and of course, um, we also get to get that all, a lot of what Judas does is, uh, as of course, 
with a lot of what Jesus happens with Jesus is there's some Old Testament predictions of Judah's betrayal. Um, Psalm 41, 9, even my close friend in whom I trusted who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. Um, Psalm 55, for it is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It's not an adversary who deals insolent with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together. Within God's house we walked in the throng. Um, and that's, you know, not, not as specific. Um, that's more kind of more general betrayal thing, but we use it to, to look at Jesus too. And then, of course, um, here uh, in Zechariah, so I said to them, it seems good to you, give me my wages, but if not keep them, and they weighed out as my wages, 30 pieces of silver. Then the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter, the lordly price at which I was priced by them. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. And that, of course, is what Jesus, what Judas does <coughs> after all this has happened. And so then, because uh, then we read in Matthew 27, then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said it is not lawful for them to put, to put them into the treasury since it's blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah saying, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the price on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Now, of course, the two things here we see that G Judas is, um, what, that, how much he's paid and what they do with it is predicted, um, again, Zechariah and Jeremiah, um, but also that um, Judas has some sort of remorse for what he's done, um, but he doesn't repent, he doesn't um, receive forgiveness. So um, one of the things we'll sometimes do is uh, pair off uh, Peter and Peter and Judas because they're both obviously both disciples. They've both, um, you know, betrayed Jesus to an extent during the during the course of this because um, Judas, of course, is, is more active, active betrayal. Peter's, you know, just denies knowing Jesus and runs away and so do the other disciples. Um, but, um, but then um, Peter uh, finds is is remorseful, but also receives forgiveness, and Judas doesn't. Um, and we see that saw that that Judas at least sort of tries to um, says, "I've sinned by betraying innocent blood." And if the chief priests and the elders said, "Sure, we absolve you," but if they they'd done what they were supposed to do, then perhaps Judas could have been forgiven. Um, and that's of course a big source of debate too. You know, what part of this was the was unforgivable. Um, and at least part of it is that Judas goes to the, who he's supposed to, to the priest for forgiveness, but they don't give it to him. Uh, because again, they've used, they've just used him. Um, and so we see that as a, of course, flaw of religious leaders to this day. Um, but also then, um, you know, that he doesn't have, have the chance to, um, to repent, uh, to uh, to to confess before Jesus, to be restored by Jesus, that Peter does, because Judas goes and hangs himself um, out, out of sorrow. And that's also kind of part of why um, suicide sometimes considered the unforgivable sin, um, because once you do it, you don't have, you can't go back and repent. Um, but now, um, I mean, Luther talked about, about that as if you were stalked by, the, by a bandit in the woods, um, talks about uh, depression and mental illness that way as being the cause of suicide. And so, um, and, and we understand some of that mental illness stuff a bit better now too, um, recognizing that it's, um, uh, that it's, it, it's not a, as unforgivable as it, we used to think. Um, but then that's of course a whole other um, side discussion as well. Uh, then of course the other point then is then in Acts, at the beginning of Acts, um, so after Jesus has ascended, but before Pentecost, 
In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. A company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language a keldama, which is field of blood. Now, of course, there's people will point out, you know, the differences between Matthew and Luke here in Acts, um, and say, well, this is obviously proof that we can't believe the Bible. Um, but you know, so um, and whether this is the, um, you know, that this is. Uh, how Luke's recording that Judas bought the field instead of the chief priest buying it with Judas' money, um, but maybe they bought it in, in, in his name, and that's the records Luke could find. Uh, or, um, and that did he hang himself? Well, no, he fell how long, and all his balls gushed out. Well, maybe he did that in the middle of his field too. Um, so again, they, there, there's ways to make this make that work that they're not um, that, that they don't they don't contradict each other. They um, so, um, but again, and that's the last mention we really get of Judas, um, because when he's, uh, replaced, so they make sure they have 12 and then, um, but then he is just then known throughout history as a traitor, as one of the most infamous traitors. Um, so why did he betray, why did Judas betray Jesus? Um, there's a few guesses, few when people try and, and come up with some different reasons for why that happened. Um, the four most common ones uh, are agreed. Again, we got we saw that he's he's the treasurer. He men- uh, John mentions that he keeps the money bag and he he skims seems to skim money off the top, and that's why he was upset that uh, he wanted to sell the perfume instead of uh, having Mary use it. Um, so greed. So Judas wanted did it because they paid him, uh, that he's fearful, um, that he, that he sees the, uh, the chief priests and the authorities closing in on Jesus. And so he's kind of like, you know, a, a rat fleeing a sinking ship goes, well, they're going to get him anyway. If they get him, they might get us. If I act, if I betray Jesus, then I at least save my own skin. Um, so that's kind of like, um, if you watch the, uh, the midweek service, this last one um, on Pilate, uh, that's kind of Pilate's action. You know, what is it, what's in it for me? Uh, that, that he's uh, dis- disillusioned, uh, that uh, maybe he is, um, has some revolutionary tendencies, uh, that he's waiting for Jesus to do more than he's been doing. Um, and so is, just thinks that, thought Jesus was the Messiah who was going to restore Israel, He's decided that Jesus isn't, and so he's going to betray Jesus cause, because he's disillusioned because he was following Jesus and now doesn't believe him to be who he said he was or anything. Uh, or the fourth one kind of going along with that, that he's trying to force Jesus to act uh, to become the Messiah he expected. So the idea that if Jesus is betrayed and captured, then that's when Jesus is going to give up on this nonviolent stuff and instead call for the people to rise up and rebel. Um, that that's why that Judas is trying to force Jesus's hand that way, and so those are kind of the four uh, main ones. And I think you know some the co- combination of them is probably good. Um, um, I think, and again, one one gets mentioned specifically. Um, I think either three or four uh, are probably uh, present as well, um, and so. Um, and that's also, again, um, some of this list comes from uh, author Philip Yancey wa- said he watched all 50 movies about Jesus and, and things and, and seeing how Hollywood's tried to make, you know, portray Judas. Um, and we see that in like Jesus Christ Superstar and some other things too, where, you know, the fact that Judas is the villain is the and yet becomes the protagonist uh, makes a lot of sense to us uh, in wanting to be in control, wanting the, you know, creating that dramatic tension, that kind of thing. All right, and then the last uh, question, uh, last big thing then about Judas is, 
So we know he's at the Last Supper, but he leaves at some point. Does he leave before Jesus does the Last Supper as in institutes Holy Communion? Uh, because, of course, that's a big deal, um, you know, practically then as as theologians and, and churches and pastors and people debate about who can receive communion and, and, and how they do it and, the, and that kind of thing. Because, of course, if if Judas received it, then that argues for a little more openness, um, you know, even if it's ineffective in his case, so to speak. Uh, but so again, uh, so much ink's been spilled over the question of Judas's presence for the institution of the Lord's Supper. The biblical story is ambiguous as to whether Judas receives communion. It's ambiguous as to when exactly he leaves. Uh, it's worth taking note that scriptures seem to imply Judas having left before the institution, but scripture does not definitively express that to be the case. So again, you know, that, I mean, Judas gets a piece of bread dipped into him, but, um, you know, there's debate over how exactly this meal would have looked. Um, and there's, um, you know, some of the uh, Seder meal kind of things uh, usually have it being kind of like the third-ish course. Um, and so maybe Judas, when Jesus dips the bread in, that that's one of the first, that's earlier in the, in the meal. Uh, but it could, he could have been there for it too. Uh, but, and, but at least some teachers, doctors of the church did hold that Judas did receive the supper. In fact, when Luther was writing about it, he said, now the partakers of this broken bread are not only the worthy, but also Judas and the unworthy. For the breaking of the bread takes place among the good and evil. It is not possible that the latter partake of it spiritually, for they have neither spirit nor faith. And so, in other words, you, Judas would have received it um, physically, but not spiritually. Um, and so applying to it the same same way in what we do in, in Holy Communion, that if that those who have faith receive it um, in faith, but the unworthy um, though are, can still physically receive it, but don't receive the, the benefits of it. All right, so that is uh, the end of our uh, study on Judas. Um, we won't there won't be a pre-recorded Bible study the next two weeks because uh, of uh, Easter. With the Easter breakfast, we won't have Bible study in between services. And then uh, the week after that is our voters meeting uh, to elect new officers and talk about things. Um, so we'll see whether we get a new bi get a Bible study uh, on Mary Magdalene either uh, May 1st uh, for that weekend, uh, but that's confirmation too, or May 8th. Uh, but thank you very much for watching along. Uh, may God bless your studies.